So we're going to have a little bit more fun here, uh, and, and then we'll stop having fun. Um, I, I've been told that, that if you go onto something called a share drive, you know what a share drive is? I hope you do. It's the Helio folder on your desktop that each and every one of you on your desktops has a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet called uh, something like uh, uh, Wilkinson Anomaly Archive.xls. Just um, zoom in a little bit so we get full oh. covers there. It's a little too hard to read from the back. Oh, OK. So. How many of you were successful in finding and opening that spreadsheet? Everybody's happy. OK. Now, the next question is, do you guys know how to use Excel? All right. Do you know how to use it sort of efficiently? You know a lot of fun tricks for doing stuff. OK. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to teach you Excel. Uh, but uh, so let's let's sort of dive into maybe uh, a couple of things. All right, um, a little bit of history. Um, this is um, a portion of an archive of data um, that uh, <clears throat> uh, David Wilkinson, who is at uh, Colorado UCAR, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, uh, put together between, uh, in, this, in this subset, between 1974 and 1994. <clears throat> and uh, you'll notice in column A, uh, satellite names, uh, many of the satellite names don't look very familiar to you. That's because they're either coded names or military satellite names or some combination of code and, and designator that uh, was completely transparent to Wilkinson under the confidentiality, confidentiality agreements that he had with the satellite owners, um, allowing him to uh, put the satellite owner's data, anomaly data, into this archive. Okay, uh, and I see a hand. Is that exercise or? Oh well, I'm not saying that this is this. You know, I I'm not going to verify every that single. <laughs> Nick, don't do this to me, please. You know, I mean, you know, it, in the in the comment column, I don't even know what half of the nouns are that are in that column. I, I assume they mean something to satellite operators, but uh, they're such shorthand that they don't mean anything to me. Uh, at the altitude information, <clears throat> I think, is reasonably, you know, complete, except for those satellites that have zero. And I'm sure they're not ground-based satellites, but uh, <laughs> in in extremely low Earth orbit. <laughs> <laughs> that means they've crashed or something. Um, but OK, so you know, getting back to this. Uh, so he had like uh, several dozen of these satellite owners, both in the military and the commercial sector, uh, feed him information about their satellites and when their satellites suffered anomalies, uh, defined as any kind of a system change between the optimal status and the status that was desired, you know, the nominal operating uh, system status. Um, and uh, basically, so we give the anomaly date, uh, basically the month, day, and the year. Uh, we give the orbit type, whether it's a geo, uh, uh, mid, mid Earth orbit, I, can't, I think middle Earth orbit, but this isn't, you know, rings and I'm sorry. Uh, and then we have polar orbits, and then we have other types, E for elliptical, and then, then others. Um, and then we have altitude, some altitude information is given. Uh, and so we have a comp fairly complete number of satellites uh, with that. Um, and also the type of the anomaly, uh, ESD means electrostatic discharge, uh, SEU means single event upset, um, uh, UNK means unknown, uh, and then there are a couple of others in there too that you'll find. And finally there's a comment uh, to the extent that the owner wished to provide it about what kind of a system was affected and how it was affected. So okay. Um, a lot of a lot of information in this table. It can drive you absolutely crazy to go through it and look for different correlations, you know, because that's what we do in space weather. We look for correlations between things because we can never really know for sure what's going on. Um, also, uh, that's sort of an, an archive page. Um, let's see. There should be a couple of other tabs too. Ooh, where did the other tabs go? Uh, 
Uh, you should see uh, one tab that gives uh, like space weather event or something, and if you Let's see. What? Oh, oh, it's this thing down here. Oh, how clever. Okay, and then I click on it. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um, if you click on, all right, that's the archive or the abridged archive. Uh, it's abridged by date. I've only included stuff between 1974 and 1994. Uh, there was stuff you know, that beyond that, but I, I just didn't put it in here because I wanted this to be a shorter archive. If you click on space weather, um, you'll come up with information about the monthly average sunspot numbers uh, between 1974 and 1994. Um, so you get an idea of solar activity, you know, where we are in the solar cycle. Um, also, there's a, a list of solar proton events. Uh, and finally, um, further out, there's uh, Let's see if I click on that. Oops. Um, yeah, there's uh, geomagnetic storms. Oh, shoot. I can't seem to get this thing right. Oh, let me do this. There we go. Uh, geomagnetic storm events, uh, basically using the, uh, the AP index, which is an index of uh, auroral activity, if you want to think of it that way, <laughs> uh, the event date um, and the duration. Uh, the duration is sort of interesting. It gives you a sense in minutes for how long the event happened. Um, and uh, so anyway, this is a, the idea here is, uh, you know, that we have a list of anomalies from satellites during this period. Uh, we have a list of space weather events also during the same period. Uh, and uh, for those that might be interested, uh, we also have um, a list of uh, satellite bus type, which, uh, uh, basically, you'll notice that uh, a number of different satellites by name uh, use the same kind of a bus type, like the uh, Boeing system uh, uh, 376. That's a very, very popular bus type, uh, which means that the, 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 the satellite hardware is basically the same, same kind of base plane for the components, same rough kind of shielding, solar panel power, and all of that. It's just what they call a standard bus, and then you put your own components on top of it and launch it. Um, so you'll, you'll notice that the BS-376 uh, is very popular and encompasses uh, quite a lot of different uh, named satellites uh, in this archive. Okay, um, the rule of thumb is that, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, these satellites, uh, uh, let's see, I think the answer to that is no, I think the large, vast majority of these are no longer operational. Um, uh, that they expired sometime in the 1990s uh, or early 2000s. Um, so uh, what we have is a, an archive that gives you um, the uh, sort of the space weather event and it gives you some information about the kind of satellite uh, that was uh, uh, being used, the type of hardware. Uh, and also the type of space weather event. Uh, first thing that I, uh, I want us to do is get a handle on, for a, a typical satellite, you know, how many anomalies does a typical satellite experience every year? Okay. Now, if I've got a list of uh, the satellites here, uh, what we're looking for is, uh, First of all, how many satellites are in the archive? Number two, how many anomalies are in the archive? And then three, you know, divide A by B, and then divide that by 20 years, because that's the scope of the archive. So that gives you the number of anomalies per satellite per year, and that is the desired number. So I'm gonna leave that as your first problem to, to, to do. It should take you about five minutes. Yeah, yeah, come on. And if I see people counting on their fingers, I know you're doing Excel inefficiently. <laughs> okay. So for, let's, let's break this into pieces. How many satellites are there in this archive? 